My name is Russell Ahrens. This board is well familiar with who I am. I live in County Road 26, Toddsville. That's Cooperstown area here. Okay. And unfortunately, I and Maria Jello, Bob Forrest is here. We and others had our property taken in 2014 and in much the same way. We were tricked about this whole thing. I mean, it was unknown to us that there was this deadline. But you see, the deadline expired. By the way, I love your time clock. Congratulations, Cooperstown, on the basketball. They did it, finally did it. Coach Bliss, I know that you did a good job, too, in their time, so get these men ready. In the meantime, I'm not here to waste my time. You took property from Maria Jell. You did it so you could get money. That's no different than a heroin addict kicking in a door, and that's what you're all afraid of. This county is actively, right now, ready to pounce on people, and unbeknownst to them, they may not get the mail, but they're going to take the property. Now, most people think you can go run into the auction, you can go to the treasurer, you know, the day before and pay. That's the way it always was in this county, but all of a sudden it changed. All done in secrecy. Now what really burns me is that we don't have an ethics board, and you know by law it's required. In this room, I'm only talking really to two people, because they were responsible for what happened. There were other people too. But to just go and sign and take a widow's property, she's the widow of a Vietnam veteran that died from Agent Orange. And if you haven't heard this story, it's enough to rankle me. I'm an employee of this county. She's an employee of this county, and they sold the property to another employee that became her fourth rental home. That's a business. You do not let people on the inside play this game so that they can evict people like her. This is Fair Housing Month. And what I heard said about those people that are going to be inhabiting that place, I totally agree with, with you, um, Ms. Harmer, and that that is way too big. Just like what you want to build down here for the new motel, four floors without proper fire apparatus. It's criminal, it's wrong. And one thing I want, Ed, this is for you. That whole south side development is all natural gas. We went and added, not we, but this county went and was there any planning? They kept adding and adding and adding and we're still doing this. And the next thing you know, people are getting shut off. So, you know, and then we need a bigger gas line. Well, did everything need to be natural gas down there? No forethought in any of this. Shot clock's running down, but still got a few. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time. <laughs> clock's kind of cool. I like it, you know? And I'll see you next month. I didn't look at the date. I miss Mr. Oberacker, and Stamble did a great job. But, Danny, you kind of hurt my feelings. I felt it was borderline discriminatory, what you said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bliss. Good morning, board members. Good morning, public. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Agello, and my home was taken in a tax auction when I begged to pay the money. Hand, here, please take my money. But Mr. Kroll said, no, we can't do that. That's against the law. You have Resolution 84 with the resolution to take $500 on a transfer of a property. You have resolution 101 to allow people now to pay later with paying all the taxes, okay. Paying the penalties, okay. Paying another 15% on top of that, which is just fine, which is what Mr. Force and I were begging you to do. We went to court, we were refused, the judges uh, passed uh, I guess a directive from the bench, that was ignored as well. This is April, Fair Hearing, Fair Housing Month. Now, I agree that maybe 64 units is way too much and more study needs to be made, but when you say that this is predominantly built for people who are on public assistance one way or another, I find that pejorative discriminatory and below what we are here for. We are here to lift people up, not condemn them. So let's keep the humanity in this project. If you feel it impacts because it's wrong for the environment, so be it. But please do not condemn the people that need your help. 
Now, what about this ethics board? I've been waiting for four years. I put it in writing four times and nothing, absolutely nothing for me or for Mr. Force. I have one minute left. I want this sale rescinded to pay our back taxes like anybody else would have been allowed. Mr. Force and I were blindsided. Our properties were just, bam, transferred. Next thing you know, we had people on our properties that didn't even have the deed correctly transferred to them. Now, um, I ask you once again, listen to us. I'm a widow of a Vietnam veteran who died for this nation. He's a veteran who is, in some ways, more destroyed than I am. His wife is ill and nobody cared. You ignore us. And it's not this board that did the damage, but you could be the board that does the best thing for all of us. Do the right thing, have humanity, God bless you. There, three minutes. <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Timothy Shore, 604 Billy Shore Road, town of Burlington. I was here a few months ago. I asked for an independent investigation into what happened with Maria Jello and Robert Force. Of course, I wasn't going to get any answer from anybody, but I did get some information, and I'm really upset over this. It seems as though the same year that their property was sold at auction, correct? 2015? 2014. 2014, okay. The very next year. It was the very next year. Piece of property. Back taxes owed $43,650. Those people were allowed to come in and pay their taxes late. Four years. Four years, mind you. They paid their taxes. They went to the bank. The bank check was written July 1st of 2015. The receipt was backdated to June 30th of 2015 to make sure that it didn't get foreclosed on. Now, question, was it a mortgage property? Didn't want to fight the bank, didn't want to take that piece of property? I'm really concerned over that. You stood up there, you took a pledge to the flag. Justice for all. Is that what justice is? Justice would be that independent investigation to find out who, how, what, and why that was allowed to happen. If it can happen for one person, it needs to happen for them. That piece of property wasn't the only one. There was another one that I'm working on, and I'll get the rest of the information on that one eventually. But it was convenient for these people because they saved that piece of property, and in the following year, March, on March 30th, they were able to sell that property and make money off from it and walk away from it because they were allowed to pay their taxes. Is that justice? Is that what you guys call justice? Is it fairness? <laughs> Not what you did to them. I want to know. I'm still going to call for that independent investigation. And I'm not going to stop until I actually see it. And I want it outside of this county and preferably outside of the state of New York. Have a good day. Thank you very much. My name is Rob Force. I live at 65 Lake Street, Patchogue. Good morning to the chair and the representatives. You all know me by now. God knows how many times I've come here. I even got surrounded by your sheriffs a few times. I'm here to stand up for everybody in this county, these people that know a lot of things that you people do are under the table. When they sold my property, Kathy Clark didn't have a resolution, nor did this your, your Otsego County Attorney to sell my property, <clears throat> nor a resolution of board vote to transfer my deeds. Where's equal justice? Why when I came to this board meeting, my uniform, my wife in a wheelchair, when I asked this board about what's going on, and they told me four or five years, <coughs> what are you doing here? They didn't know it was litigation. But yet you took my property. You took my property when I had one year back taxes in 2013 for a dollar. Three properties 
worth over $300,000. And nobody wanted to listen to us. But God rest her soul, Betty Ann Sword, as short as she was, she stood up. Tall in stature, she had integrity and courage to question this board. And you mocked her, laughed at her, laughed at Maria, me, my uniform, her flag she carried from her husband and died from Agent Orange. How dare you? You're tyrants. Tyrants that our forefathers warned us about. If you could take my property, her property, or anyone in this room's property, the way you took our property, you could take anyone's property. How did it all start? I, I tried to pay my taxes, he wouldn't allow me. You wouldn't allow me to pay my back taxes. I went to that auction, August 20th of 2014. I had in my hands, from the, only on a day to start, a woman that paid $53,000 of back taxes the prior year. And he, they were allowed to pay the back taxes. Why? Sole discretion of the treasurer. Dan, and Dan Crow wasn't even the treasurer at that time. That's what he told me. Sole discretion. Are you kidding me? You have resolution to state four years. I can pay my taxes. I've asked four or five times. I brought my taxes to this board five times with a letter from my wife's neurologist. That poor woman couldn't remember the date while I was laying in a hospital recuperating from surgery. Did you care about that? No. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. And how about when my attorney met? Because I couldn't get an attorney to represent me up here because we know what I'm up against. New York State Administrative Judge. I'm not against that county attorney. You got kangaroo courts. I lost in court. When my, my attorney asked her, why would you do this to a veteran with a disabled wife? She said, let's not make this personal. Let's not make this personal. It's personal. You took away from me what I worked for all my life. What I fought for for this country. To stand up for what's right. And I'm standing up for these people. You t intimidated us. You made me sound like I was a dirtbag taxpayer. What, I didn't pay my taxes one year? And you came after me. Like demons. You went out of your way to take my property and hers. So when you took that Pledge of Allegiance, liberty and justice for all, where's our justice? Where's our justice in this county? Who's going to stand up in this county and back us? You should be ashamed of yourselves and hang your heads in shame. Thank you. Hi. Um, I forgot to bring up the fact that uh, your current uh, treasurer, Mr. Truffles, didn't he ask this board a few months back that it's on YouTube, I have it on record, that he wanted to go from four years to three years to take a property that you don't use state law, which is <coughs> Article 11 in REM, which when you couldn't prove the four or five years, of course you came up with that. You took my property using in REM. So now my question is, you passed a resolution at the last board meeting, you take, you're letting people to take their properties back that were taken in REM? Why? Why? Because it wasn't your law? Was it illegal? And now you allow them eight, ten years from now? That, that their properties were taken as long as they weren't sold, you're gonna give them back to them? Where's the equal justice, the 14th Amendment? Equal law, equal justice. How can you do that? How can you say that to Maria and I, with a straight face, that we're not gonna get our properties back, but we can't pay our back taxes? Or you can compensate us for what you did. You didn't give us the balance of so-called taxes you set out. You made me put $20,000 in escrow. That's the first time anybody in this county did. Now let's get back to the embezzlement case of $25,000 out of the treasurer's office. Do all you board members know what really happened there? Do you know that the worker had a banker in the city laundered the money? You pay the money back, you go to a court. Fly Creek, you pay the money back, it's a misdemeanor. I don't know about you, but I think that's very large. That's prison time. And the guy that did it never got prosecuted. Now here's the one that's really, you're gonna enjoy, and I find very ironic. That the guy that Mr. Uh, uh, Tim Shore, he's right here, the checks that he has, and the other check that's gonna come, guess what? He gave us those copies of the checks. So what is it? Your kangaroo courts, your backroom deals, shut your mouth, you don't go to prison? You had my money in your account, which means I paid my taxes. How do you deny all this? And then my attorney on December 5th of 2015 met with Alan Kakoma, showed her the, the receipts of these, these two uh, uh, properties were allowed to redeem them, and said, let's negotiate before I go to district court in the city, Brooklyn. 
guess what? It wasn't a negotiation. I get a letter, two paragraphs. I had due process already. How's that due process? I want to know. Due process. When you go to the Supreme Court one day, look up on the building and see what it says. When law ends, tyranny begins. <coughs> There's a lot going on in this county. These people don't know about it. You can just pass whatever you want. Very convenient to turn your backs to people and have meetings in the morning at 10 o'clock in the morning. What happened to we the people? We the people that elect you in office. I hope that one of you will have the integrity and the courage to talk to Maria and I. Compensate us for what you did. Thank you. The board felt that it was important that the public be made aware of certain facts about the collection of real property taxes and tax foreclosures. When real property taxes are not paid, the state law requires that the county reimburse the towns and schools for the revenue lost, totaling many thousands of dollars each year. State law also requires that the county seek to collect the taxes by the tax foreclosure process, which is also mandated by the state law. The county has no authority to change the process. The county sends more than 15 notices to property owners over a period of years before auctioning the property, which is the last step in the process. The county also gives taxpayers more time to pay than the state law, but does set a deadline, which is generally June 30th of each year before the August auction. Taxpayers are well aware of the deadline. In order to treat all property owners equally, payment beyond that deadline is not allowed. The auction takes place in public and generally is recorded and or videoed. Any person can challenge the county's actions in court. The people addressing the board today have brought court cases against the county and were represented by attorneys. These cases have been considered by courts at least four different times and the county has been found to be in compliance with the law each time and their cases were dismissed. Thank you.